And so many things that we think are bad are only, they only seem bad because it's not what we had planned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's actually God trying to bring us into a better place. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure. And a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Hi, everyone. We have all the answers to all your problems today. (laughs) This is the best time to join us. We also have an announcement for you later that is important and you're going to want to hear it. So stick with us all the way through. Um, But we're talking today about everything that's available in God's Word. And Joyce has a new book called Overcoming Every Problem. You hear that title and you're like, I'm in. Yeah, right. You know, yes, I, I want to know that. But Makes it's talk- me want to buy it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's talking about 40 promises from God's Word to strengthen us through life's greatest challenges. So um, one one of the questions is like, how how can one old book do that? I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. that's a big claim. Yeah. Well, I really do believe, and I've got 45 years experience, that the answer to every problem we have is in the Word. Amen. And it, you know, obviously you may take a little bit to find them, but they're all in there. And many, you might have one problem and there might be 20 answers to Mm -hmm. that problem, Mm -hmm. you know, all the way from trusting God to being hopeful, to staying positive, to prayer, you know, all kinds of things. But I have found over the years that the Holy Spirit uses different scriptures at different times. Like, they're more than just reading a scripture. It's like it becomes a real, uh, the Greek is a real rhema word. It's like a, a word from the word right. mm-hmm. that just is made alive to you. And so I think today we're going to talk about some of those scriptures that God has given each of us that have really, really made a difference in our life. I mean, I can actually say that there's certain scriptures that have truly been life-changing for me. I'm so excited you wrote a book about this because, one, you write good books. But also, (laughs) I think, like, having grown up in the church, we talk a lot about how important the Bible is. So that's Mm. that's just something we all know Mm -hmm. if you have been raised in church. And you say things like you can find the answers in the Bible, but that is sometimes something we just say. But when you actually are going through something, it you kind of, like, where do you even start with that? Mm-hmm. So to have a tool that kind of walks you through, like, this is how you actually find it. It's not like you go, it's not a dictionary. Yeah, I can't say, what do I do when my car breaks down and I have to be somewhere on a Wednesday? Right. <laughs> that is not in the Bible, specifically yeah. like that. But to teach us what that actually means to be able to find the answer, I think is so important that some of us don't even know how to do. That's right. an interesting example, because yeah. what the Bible does answer you is not call AAA and then, yeah. you know, right. but it does tell you how to persevere through uh-huh. difficulties like that and how to have patience and mm-hmm. how not to let your attitude get bad. All those things that I need desperately. Right. <laughs> I just that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and sometimes when you have a situation like that, what you need to do instead of getting upset is to get quiet hmm. and God will give you wisdom Yeah, because you have wisdom inside of you. Mm-hmm. And many times that's what you need. There is a solution. It's just when we get all upset, then we can't hear from God what those solutions are. Yeah, that's and very so true. It that is. I find to be you know, very helpful. And also there's the gifts of the Spirit. There's words of knowledge and words of wisdom. And I can't tell you how many times I can't find something in the house and I'll ask God to show me where it's at Mm -hmm. and I'll just see it in my spirit where it's at and Mm -hmm. go there and get it. Yeah. Yeah, One thing I love about the fact that you've written this book is the title alone, Overcoming Every Problem. It's because a lot of times I've I've grown up in church and 
although we know problems exist, a lot of times church and, and mm. Christianity doesn't talk about things that even sound remotely negative. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of spiritual bypassing of yeah. everything's OK. And um, and so nowadays, you know, we talk more about trouble and things like that. But to actually have a title that says overcoming every problem, mm -hmm. that is a sigh of relief to to me. And I'm sure a lot of other people to know that, like, you ha we have problems right. in right. life. Yeah. There will be problems. Yeah. You're not <laughs> weird. <laughs> You're not weird. Yeah. You're not negative for acknowledging like this is a problem. Right. Like, yeah. like what yeah. I'm dealing with is not easy. And mm -hmm. so like I think this is super helpful just in the title alone just to disarm a lot of people that might not even be Christian to say, mm -hmm. you know what? I have everyday problems. And when I yeah. originally wrote the content for that, I called it 40 things the word of God does for you. Mm. And of course, there's more than 40, but those were some of the most prominent ones yeah. that I could think of. Like, for example, I'll start us off here. One of the scriptures that was really life changing for me, you know, I think all young Christians begin by seeking God to do something for them. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. get rid of this problem or give me this or yeah. do that or help me get a raise at work or I want to get married or change my kid or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think God lets us go on like that for a period of time because he wants to establish how much he loves us and that he wants to do things for us. Mm -hmm. But then we come to a time of transition where he doesn't want us just to seek his hand, mm -hmm. but he wants us to seek his face, not just to seek him for what he can do for us, but just to seek him for him mm -hmm. because we need him. Yeah. And so I was at one of those transition points in my life. I didn't know it, but God really gave me Psalm 27, 4 in the Amplified. It says, one thing have I ask of the Lord, and that will I seek for and insistently require, mm -hmm. that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence all the days of my life, to behold and gaze upon the beauty, the sweet attractiveness, and the delightful loveliness of the Lord, and to meditate, consider, and inquire in His temple. So the Amplified's a little bit long, a lot of descriptive words, but basically in the other translations, it says, one thing have I ask of the Lord, and that will I seek after. Hmm. And seek is a very strong word. Actually, there's only a few things in the Bible we're told to seek. Mm. We're told to seek peace. Yeah. We're told to seek God. But like you're never you're never told to seek prosperity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there the things that God tells us to seek are things that will really make a yeah. difference yeah. in our life. So one thing if I desired and that will I seek after that I might dwell in your house and behold your beauty all the mm -hmm. days of my life, which makes it a lot shorter mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit easier to grasp. But uh I remember when the Lord was dealing with me about this, he actually challenged me. Don't I don't want you to ask me for anything except more of me mm. until I give you permission to do so. Was it hard? Um, <laughs> well, it, it, it was six months before he let me wow. Wow, that's a long time. ask him for anything other than him. Mm. So you'd start to and just kind of feel I like... I would start to and then it would be almost like it mm. would... Mm -hmm. Almost choke you, huh? Almost <laughs> choke me. I yeah. go, well, never mind. I just need you. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, really, when you get down to it, that is what we need. Yeah. We need God because all the answers to everything are in Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we go to Him for things. Mm -hmm. And so an example I use is, let's say, my husband had been on a long trip, and he came back, and I met him at the airport. If I didn't look at him in the face, if I just started to look at his hands and what he had in his pockets, mm -hmm. what did you bring me? What have you got? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, Where's my present? <laughs> he would get insulted. But if I if I look at his face, oh, I'm so glad to see you, huh. then his hands are open. Right. Oh, that's really mm -hmm. good. And so I think that's if beautiful. we seek God for who he is, that's good. his yeah. hands will always be open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if we just seek his hands, then we may find them closed and we'll miss the beauty of seeking who he is. Because things have no ability to make you happy. The Bible mm -hmm. says, seek yeah. first the kingdom and his righteousness, and things will be added. Right. You know, we seek his face, then his hands are open. Yeah. Right. But, and it, yeah. it, it's really great to see how all of these different things in the Bible that, that God teaches us, it, it, 
it is for our good. Right. right. You know, it's it's not always about a bunch of rules and regulations. Right. It is to answer the need that he's put in our life right. for him. Right. So what we're going to do now before we talk more about some of these scriptures and some of the promises in God's word is Joyce is going to share a, a list of several scriptures and talk more about the importance of God's word in meeting those needs in our life. Teach me good judgment wise and right discernment and knowledge, for I have believed, trusted, relied on, and clung to your commandments. Boy, this is a good one here, Psalm 119, 72. God's Word is better than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Yeah, wow. Are we going to pursue the Word of God even halfway as much as we pursue making a living and making money? Would you be willing to, let, let's just say that you had a job and that job required so much out of you that you could not attend church, you did not have any time to study the Word, would you say, well, there's nothing I can do, I have to make a living? Or would you be willing to get another job, one where maybe you even made a little less money, but you said, if I have to do without some stuff, I can, but I cannot do without the Word of God. Yeah, that's right. I have to have God in my life, I have to have His presence, and I have to have the Word. When we begin to honor the Word to that degree, we see God's honor come into our life in an amazing, amazing way. Psalm 119, 72, The law from your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Now also, the Bible says in Psalm that God's Word makes me wiser than my enemies. How many of you want to be a little smarter than the devil? You know, if somebody's out to get you, wouldn't you like to recognize what they're up to before you're seriously in trouble? Yes. I like being wiser than my enemies. Yes. Here's the scripture. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for your words are ever before me. Mm. Psalm 119.05, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It shows us which way to go in life. Should I go right? Should I go left? Should I do this? Shouldn't I do this? Thank you, Lord. What does the Word have to say? When we are afflicted, God's Word quickens us and gives us life. I love that quickening. Yes. Stimulates. Encourages. Psalm 119, 107. I am sorely afflicted. <laughs> Renew and quicken me. Give me life, O Lord, according to your Word. You know, these are great scriptures to pray. Yeah. You know, you can pray the Word. Yeah. Fill your prayers with the Word of God. Yeah. And if you think, well, I just yeah. don't even know how to pray about this situation, then find some scriptures that apply to your situation and just commit those things to memory and confess those scriptures all throughout the day. And every time the enemy comes and says, well, this is not going to work, you say, well, listen to this. I, I like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. well... Uh, yeah, there, there's an answer for you right. that yeah. God has, has given me. And I think one of the most dangerous things for any of us is to have at our fingertips the, the answer that we need and, and not to reach out and know what it is, yeah. not, not to open that book and see what it might be. And you just think, what, what a waste. Yeah, that's true. You know, I had a problem last year. I've had lots of problems, but <laughs> one in particular I had last year. I, I could feel, you guys probably know what this feels like. I could feel myself striving to just figure out like, what is it that God wants me to do? I don't want to miss anything, so I'm just going to try all this stuff. And so I could feel, do you relate? <laughs> do you hear yourself in my words? No, I can just see you trying a bunch of stuff. Yes, and it felt like I was like, oh, is this it? No, it's not it. And so I was exhausting myself and I was getting frustrated and... Like, am I, am I doing the right things? And I was getting nowhere. And so the verse you shared about seeking God first mm -hmm. is really what God just put in my heart at the beginning of this year was stop and I'll show you what you need to do when it's time. But right now, the whole point is to seek me. If nothing else happens, right. you read that word and you do what I want yeah. you to for the day. And I, I have that freedom that I felt in that moment was exactly what I needed. I haven't, I can feel myself sometimes trying to pick it back up like, what could I do here? No, God told me to seek His face, <laughs> put it down, and just have freedom today. So that that was a that was a really big lesson I learned. I don't know why it is so hard for Christians just to get up and enjoy the day. It's hard for us. Mm. Difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we and of course hmm. it's Satan. 
he wants us to feel like we have to be doing something yep. all the time. And Christianity doesn't begin with a do, it begins with a done. Mm. Mm. It's about what Jesus has done, so good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not about what we need to do. And of course, it took me years and years and yeah. years to get over that. So I'm, I'm talking from both sides of it, from sure. not having victory and having victory. But I just finished writing a book that it won't come out until 2025, but it's... it's <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only Joyce Meyer. That's just You know, I just finished so writing cute. a book. It'll, only, it'll come out in, in 2030, but... Uh, <laughs> but I finished it last week. That's how far ahead I am. But don't feel like you have to do a lot. Yes, no. <laughs> you just make it through your day, but I'm going to do next year's work. Yeah. And, and yes, what was that? What was anyway, that? you make what a good point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, now you made me forget what I was going to say. Uh, oh, about finding God's will for your life. Yeah, mm. I think that so many people frustrate themselves. Yes. Yeah. Trying to find God's will for their life, and you you don't really have to do that. I yeah. think there's a a mm-hmm. general will of God for everybody's life. And then there's a specific assignment yeah. that God has for you. Mm-hmm. But and maybe this is just my opinion, but I don't think you're going to get that specific assignment until you're doing the general will of God for yep. his life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, for example, the first chapter in the book is called Serve the Lord with Gladness. <laughs> well, yeah. that's, can you just get up every day and just be glad? Right. Be glad you're saved. Yeah. Be glad you're going to live forever. I mean, there's so many things that we have to be glad about, yeah. That, but we only think about what's right here mm-hmm. in front of us. Yeah. And the more, the more I wrote in this book, the more I realized how people just don't need to do all that. When God yeah. called me, I was making my bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was listening to a teaching on a cassette tape, and <laughs> it just blew. I mean, it was yeah. just like, it just came like a roar in me. Yeah. I'm you're gonna teach the word all over the world. Mm-hmm. And when God wants to say something to you, yeah. he will say it to you. Yeah. We we try too hard to get him to say something mm-hmm. yes. instead of just serving him and loving him. And I think if you make yourself available to God, mm-hmm. then He'll get you when he needs you. That's yeah. true. It's like every little voice you hear, it's like, is that is that yes. it? Yeah. Is, that, is that you? <laughs> yes. Is yeah. that, was, was that thought it? Yeah. Right. Right. It's, fu- it's funny that you bring that up. I was just having a conversation with a friend last week, and we were talking about um, like when you're in that season of dealing with a problem or multiple problems and you don't see the other side of it. And like, I've been so candid about the different problems I've been through uh, in the past few years. But like, it's just funny that, when God pivots you into the other side of what victory Mm -hmm. looks like, Mm -hmm. you're able to look back in hindsight. And I said to her, I said, you know, I, I, I kind of (laughs) wish that I would have worried less Mm -hmm. and, and rested more because now that it's go time, now that I see the other side, it's go time, you know? And so that's just like, while we're in that problem, we want God to resolve it. And we want Mm -hmm. to see the, 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 the light at the end of the sure. tunnel. We want to mm-hmm. see, God, what is the purpose in this? Mm-hmm. Why, why, why? What, what, what? What am <laughs> yeah. I supposed to be doing? What am yeah. I supposed to When honestly, a lot of times we're just supposed to be resting up for mm. whatever's next. That is and such you, a hard yeah. one and yeah. so true. It's, we're supposed to be resting and seeking him. And it's okay to ask the questions, but I, I exhausted myself. And I know a lot of friends of mine have done it too. We exhaust ourselves to the point that we're almost at fatigue when it's time to, he's like, I'm ready for you to go, but now you're yeah. too tired. You haven't yeah. even rested up well and 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 armed yourself while while mm. uh in that rest p- season when yeah. you're supposed to be gearing up for what's next we're asking god so much mm-hmm. for what's next that we should just be i love that paul said in philippians 4 11 i have learned how to be content mm-hmm. yes and mm. it was something he had to learn and yeah. This is just my opinion again, but I think he probably learned it by trying everything else exactly. first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seeing that yeah. all that stuff didn't work. Yeah. Well, Paul is that <laughs> kind. I love that he talks about that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I would say that most of the time now, 
I'm content. Mm -hmm. I told you I had kind of a weird morning. I got out of bed and felt like slapping somebody, which is not like me. <laughs> but, but you just, gotta love the honesty. Yeah, just if anybody else felt like that this and morning. That's I, I, need to, I, I, I need to move. I, I, don't, I don't want you to feel bad. I was just like, you know? and then I said I got in the shower and Dave's real tall, so. He had the shower nozzle pointed way out, and I didn't realize it. And it got my hair wet. And I, this wasn't a hair washing no. day, and I was like, <laughs> that worst. is the worst. This is. is not a good day. <laughs> but um, we, just contentment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, godliness with contentment is of great gain, mm -hmm. the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would love to see people just calm down about this, what is God's will for my life? Yeah. yeah. What is God's will for my life? And just... Why can't you just believe you're in God's will? Right. And if he has something else, he'll let you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if God hasn't said yeah. anything to you in a year, then just keep doing what he told you the last time mm -hmm. he said something. And you know that I really appreciate that the book is called Overcoming Every Problem. It's not about making all the problems disappear. Yeah. Right. right. We're going to have them. It's like you were talking about, Jay, but yeah. it's about how to learn through God's word how to be an overcomer yeah. in what you're dealing with. And sometimes um, we can just get so much in our head and so much that we're overthinking. Right. And I know when I get to that stress point, I, I don't mm -hmm. often feel it because, you know, we all kind of thrive on stress. Mm -hmm. When I start to have weird dreams <laughs> or sleepwalk or talk in my sleep. Or, you do all of that? I do all that. You sleepwalk? I, if I get really stressed, <laughs> I do. Wow. I'd love to see that on camera. <laughs> oh, Tim has so many stories. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's usually around women's conference time, but yeah. it's not every year. But anyway, <laughs> that aside. I have never done that. <laughs> and I think that that stress comes out in all of us in different ways because, like, mm -hmm. I don't feel stressed at all. But, like, <laughs> last night I had the dumbest dream. And when I start having stupid dreams, I know that it's something uh -huh. like that. And I don't know why, but last night I dreamed that I had hobbit feet. Yeah. <laughs> and they were very large and hairy. Wow. <laughs> and that the hair kind of came up my leg just enough that you could see it around, you know, my pants. And it was very unbecoming. And I'm like, what am I going to do with these hairy hobbit feet? <laughs> and you talk about the, the things that your mind does yep. under stress. I woke up and I was so grateful that yeah. they were and not. Your little bitty Barbie feet. Yeah, they were not large and furry see, at all. Have to be thankful. For? Yeah, <laughs> something to be grateful for. You just but, have normal feet. <laughs> and it sounds so silly, but but we do our our natural state sometimes mm -hmm. is to push and push and push and push things down and, mm -hmm. and then we get stressed and, and then we deal with it. But see, there would be some people who would spend all day trying to interpret that dream. Yeah, like, what is God saying? And, and yeah, what, what is, what is God same. saying Big, through yeah. that dream? In and, a hairy yeah. situation. <laughs> 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 I love that. Trying to figure out now. Yeah, yeah right? You see how I flip yeah, that? Yeah, I like it. I like it. Dream interpretation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But but instead, you know, I, I think it is staying in God's Word. Yeah. Right. So it's not just digging for an answer when you need it. You know, mm -hmm. I've got hairy hobbit feet. How do I answer this? <laughs> <laughs> but it's knowing I, I can have peace in this day and give whatever it is that I'm feeling, whatever it is that I'm dealing with, over to the Lord. And you have in the book, like, all these chapters of different things, the 40 that you're dealing with, and there are many more, as you said, things that God's Word helps you mm -hmm. to deal with. And just to talk about some of those, it, it teaches us the truth. It helps us with healing and our health, our physical health. Um, it protects us. It helps us with stability and faithfulness that, you know, just so many things. It guides us. It gives us the power to create. Right. I mean, there really is nothing no. that we can't find something applicable to God's Word in. So, Jay, let me ask you, mm -hmm. um, what is a scripture that God really has used in your life to help you overcome something or, or to teach you something like that? The one that sticks out to me the most is Jeremiah 29, 11. That is the one that I, I always just default and go to Jeremiah. And I want to make sure I, I say it correctly. Um, 
but it's one that I know by memory, but I want to make sure I, re- I say it correctly. For I know the plans that I have towards you, said the Lord. I have thoughts of peace and not of evil and to give you an expected end. Mm. And so whenever I feel like Satan is derailing me or catching me off guard or um, when I think that maybe my plan isn't being executed the way that I thought that it would be, um, I trust God yeah. that he has before I was created in my mom's womb, mm-hmm. that he has a plan for me. And even those things that are meant for evil, that's another one. It, like whatever Satan means for evil, he'll turn it around for my good. Right. He will always turn it around for my good. So I always glean on Jeremiah twenty nine eleven and Romans eight twenty eight. you know, all things work together. Things right. that don't even feel right, that don't. Don't sit right. Don't anything. It just he'll it'll, he will always work it out for my good. Yeah. That yeah. scripture Romans eight twenty eight to me that's like the premier mm-hmm. scripture in the Word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I really really believe that scripture. Yeah, that we we can be in what we think is the most unfair unjust mm-hmm. situation, and if. Mm-hmm. And there is an if. Yeah. If you keep a good attitude right. and continue to do what the Word tells you to do, mm-hmm. then it always works out for your good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It may That's take good. time, but it always works out for your good. Mm-hmm. And so many things that we think are bad, are only they only seem bad because it's not what we had planned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's actually God trying to bring us into a better place mm-hmm. yeah. for our life. Mm-hmm. So how do you dig into this and and trust and walk in those promises during those times that you're not seeing like you said what what we think we should see where God's word says that this this is going to happen and I'm going to believe it and I'm going to stand on it but I don't I don't exactly see it yet. What what do you do during well, that I've time? I've got a fresh example. I've been having pain in my back for 2 3 Four years, had to give up going out and walking, which I love to do. If I do it after two or three days, then my back will start hurting. And I've been going to the chiropractor, going to the chiropractor, you know, getting adjustments, getting adjustments. And so um, about eight years ago, I had a little, they call it a laminectomy. Like I had a little spinal stenosis, one spot, because I've got some arthritis in my spine. And uh, that's just because... Well, I'm not old, but it's because... It's not that. <laughs> they, they say it's because of age. So anyway, um, They're lying. That's just a number. You know, we the, know that. The body only lasts so long. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I really needed an answer. Yeah. I needed an answer, and I didn't did not know what to do. So started with an MRI and went to the doctor, and after... After looking at the MRI, he didn't really sound too hopeful that Mm -hmm. another laminectomy might fix it. So now I had three places Mm -hmm. in my spine where when you you get that stenosis, your spine narrows and it starts Mm -hmm. to press on the nerves. Mm -hmm. And so you can have pain down your legs. You can have it in your bottom. You can have it across your back. And uh, so then they sent me for a different kind of test, a myelogram. And uh, he called me yesterday, and he said, after looking at this test, he said, I am very sure that a laminectomy will help you a lot. And so it took a while for that answer to come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God doesn't always just poof. Yeah, that's right. true. And it's gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes he does, but l- let's be honest, those times are rare. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's know? true. And uh, But healing... I mean, God, all healing comes from God. Amen. I don't believe that there's any doctor or science or medicine that has enough brains to come up with some of the things that they can do today to help fix you. You know, like I'm sitting here with two hips that they replaced, took out my old ones and put in new ones. (laughs) And... uh, that had to be God. Maybe. You know, I mean, <laughs> you're how bionic. Can, how can you do, yeah, you're I, bionic. I guess if I get enough new parts, I'll be like the bionic woman. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just trying to make the point that just because you don't get what you think is a miracle yeah. mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you're not getting a miracle. Mm-hmm. It's just 
who knows if I wouldn't have been trusting God. Right. What kind of, I might have went to the wrong doctor who might have given me the wrong advice. And so if any time that you're praying and asking God to guide you, mm -hmm. I believe he guides us even when we don't know that he is. Yeah, yeah. that's that's helpful. Yeah. I think, because I've walked, I mean, I've, we've all waited for things. And one thing I love so much about the word is that as I'm waiting and I'm reading Bible verses about that, then he'll show me another verse to go to. Mm -hmm. And it's not that my answers are being met in the way that I'm asking for them. I'm not praying for a baby and getting the baby that day. I am being shown comfort during that season. Mm -hmm. And there's there's something you talk about this, Joyce, to like that knowing inside of you. Mm -hmm. I know he's with me. I'm not getting yeah. my answer. Right. But I I am overcoming because oh, I yeah. know he is with me and I know I have his peace. So that is so much a part of the answer to me. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes that healing comes through being able to walk through those difficult yeah. times and maybe even going home to be with him. I mean, yeah. Yeah. healing is sure. that way Accepting sometimes. Whatever, whatever that outcome is. I know recently, mm -hmm. I shared this a little bit ago that I, like at my first mammogram, um, they found a mass. Mm -hmm. And so I was really nervous and I had to shift my faith because I've, you know, with going through a lot of different things that you, I had faith for, and then my marriage didn't come, you know, like yeah. it, it ended. So it's like, prepare yourself for mm -hmm. both sides. So that's one thing that I, I now do is like, it's like the three Hebrew boys, like, even though if I walk through the fire, if you don't bring us out, I know you're capable of doing it, yeah. you know, so yeah. right. shifting my mindset with that. But then after, I also knew that I couldn't deal with it at that moment because I had other things that I was dealing with, but mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to deal with it. Like I was a little fearful of it. And I also had a lot on my plate. That I'm like, this is one thing I just cannot take right this moment. <laughs> I don't and have so, time for that. Yeah. Like, right now, like this, this little man's going to have to wait for a second, mm -hmm. you know, now, but not, I knew I couldn't, I talked to my doctor, of course, to say like, can I get a little moment to like breathe instead of like working on it real quick? Because emotionally, usually I'm a go getter type person. Mm -hmm. If something's wrong, let's just fix it right then. But yeah. where I was mentally and emotionally, I knew I couldn't take it at the moment. But then another thing that I did was settle with that. But then when I came here, I talked to my friends. I told you guys like, hey, I'm nervous about this. This is happening. I asked Joyce. I know she's gone through a lot of different things. She's like, Satan always attacks me with my body. But but the way that she kind of breezes through it and like, I know God's got me. It, and she said, she, you looked at me in my eyes. You said, take it one, breathe and take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. And thank God the testimony, it, it did come back benign. I'm super excited about that. That's but great. I was definitely in a mindset of like the three Hebrew boys. If he doesn't, if yeah. it comes back something else, I know you've gone through this. I know my mom's gone through this. Mm -hmm. I know I'll go through whatever Satan tries to throw at me. So mm -hmm. I think a shift in mindset while you See, wait. I was helps. expecting a good report and didn't get one. Mm -hmm. I was totally shocked when they mm -hmm. came back and said it's cancer. And back when I had when I had it, which was thirty some odd, well, it was nineteen eighty nine or ninety nine, so a long time ago. Eighty nine, long time ago. <laughs> and uh, back then, they just did a mastectomy. They didn't do the lumpectomy and then yeah. do the chemo and the radiation, which I'm just as glad of. And so. God doesn't have the same answer for all of us. Yeah. yeah. But something I want to say about this thing about the word that I think is really important is as Christians, and even like if the people hear this on a regular basis, this podcast, or they watch me on television, we're always talking about the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Read the word, the word, the word, the word. Mm -hmm. But I don't want people to just look at it like the word. Yeah. You know, it's like, Take it personally mm -hmm. and read it slowly and digest it. You know, chew on it a little bit. Like you, that's what it, you know, that's what you're doing when you're meditating on something. It's yeah. like mm -hmm. chewing on your food. Don't swallow the word whole and just think just, well, I read my chapter today. I'm okay with God. Mm -hmm. Look at them as promises from God for you yeah. and take them that way. Yeah. Yeah, I have one of the scriptures that, that God really used in my life flows perfectly into what you're talking about. Because growing up in the church, I had that experience where I I knew all of the things. Mm -hmm. You know, I I knew that Christ died for me and that I was saved and all of that and and grateful for it. But when I got this scripture, 
to really be part of my life. It, it changed so much. And it's Psalms 139, 17 and 18. And it says, How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when yeah. I wake up, you are still with me. Mm. The reason that that meant so much to me is because all the things that I knew, you know, that that for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him. And I needed more mm-hmm. than to be in the group of whosoever. Yeah, <laughs> I needed to know that God knew me and loved me in a deep and specific way. Mm-hmm. So when I read this, that He thinks about me right. so many times a day that I can't even fathom it, that started changing mm-hmm. because then it was no longer, I was one in a group of all the people in the world that God loved, but I was one that He knew and had good plans for it. It kind of opened up the rest mm-hmm. of the Bible yeah, to me so as good. well. Yeah. And I, as the girls were growing up, I would always tell both of them, you know, you're my favorite. Mm-hmm. I would, you know, don't tell your sister, but you're my favorite. And they both knew that I was telling them both that and that, you know, so it was it was like a joke. But I still love that because I, I can hear God saying that to me. Right. Mm-hmm. That's you exactly know, right. That I am his favorite and that he is a big enough God to say that to you and you and you and totally mean it. Yeah. yeah. Because he thinks of us that way and that specifically. So that scripture was one of the ones that not only really changed my life, but opened up the rest of That's God's good. word to me in a different way. Yeah. What about you, Aaron? Any specific scripture? Yeah, I, as we've sat here, I've thought of three different ones. I keep like to change my mind which one I want to <laughs> you share. Only get, you only get one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this one wasn't one that I was thinking about, but I love John ten ten mm-hmm. because. Oh, the, that's one of mine. I stole it. <laughs> I got a different one. Just a, pick a different one. No, nope. no. <laughs> I mean, you are Joyce. Oh, you can have it. No. <laughs> but I, I love it because. I, I get sometimes annoyed that there's bad things that happen in this world. So yeah. that one is so good for me to remember. The, God told me this bad stuff is going to happen. Yeah. The thief says is comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. So things will happen to me. That is promised. But he is bigger than that. Right. And I yeah. can still enjoy my life like you were saying. I don't yeah. have to worry because he knew all of these things, good and bad, were going to happen. So that's one of my favorites. But why do you ampl- like it? In the, ampl- <laughs> you like it? <laughs> in the Amplified, it says, and see, that's a good thing about the Word, too. Uh-huh. What it, that scripture, what it did for me was something different Yes. than what it did for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because the Amplified says, the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life mm. and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Mm-hmm. And because of being abused in my childhood, I never got to be a child. Yeah. I feel like I've always been an adult. Yeah. yeah. Always, uh, you I know, it, yeah. I was responsible to make sure that my mother didn't find out that my mm-hmm. father was sexually abusing me. You know, I've always carried a real load of responsibility and never got to be a kid. So I didn't know how to in- just relax and enjoy mm-hmm. really anything. Mm-hmm. I always felt safer if I was working and doing. That's why the 2025 book's done. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the 2020, 2031. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, And it was really great to me to learn that in my 50s, I could be a child. Yeah. And it's so great. God taught me how to just enjoy, Mm -hmm. enjoy Him. You know, even people like we, let's don't find what's wrong with each person. Mm -hmm. Let's find what we can enjoy. Yep about that person. God wants us to enjoy Mm -hmm. our lives. And that doesn't mean just when I'm on vacation or when I'm getting a new outfit or on a holiday, but just my ordinary, plain, everyday, sometimes Mm -hmm. unexciting life. Mm -hmm. We can enjoy that if we enjoy God. I think that to me is one of the most exciting parts about finding your answer in the Bible, because you and I had the same favorite verse for two very different reasons. Mm -hmm. And that to me, like it really is alive and active. Mm -hmm. And he speaks so specifically to me, what I need and what you need. I think that's amazing. Yeah. 
Well, um, we told you we have an announcement that we want to let you know about. Um, but before we do that, Joyce's book, Overcoming Every Problem, we want to get it to you today because there's so much more in the word that we haven't even touched on today. So make sure that you're spending that time in the word and you can get this book right now by going to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And you can get it for any amount, which means anything that you would like to donate, which will go to all of our outreaches right. and all of the things that we're able to do around the world and to share God's love with people, you'll be a part of it and you'll get the answer to every problem you yeah. could ever <laughs> ask. So it's really great. Um, we have some news that that we want to share and we're very, very excited for our friend Jay for some new things that are happening. But also there's going to be a change in the podcast, but Jay, tell us what you've got going on. Yeah, well, I'm super, super excited. Um, for those that have been a part of the podcast, know that I'm a pastor's kid. Um, I was married to a pastor. Then I went through a very life-shattering divorce while being a pastor on staff. I started off in this ministry, actually, as the worship pastor at the St. Louis Dream Center, which was amazing. So I've been with the ministry now about almost 10, well, a little over 10 years, maybe, I think now, which has been really cool. Um, and But when I was going through the divorce, that problem, <laughs> that big problem, the biggest problem I've, I've had to date, you know, um, I took a seat back from working in full-time ministry. It was one of those times where I was like, I've seen pastors bleed on, <laughs> on their members. And me being, um, I was the global worship pastor of a church that had about 20,000 members. And I just said, right now, because I'm so broken, um, I just need to take a seat back and focus on healing myself right. and he talk and dealing with my daughter. Like mm -hmm. it was me and my daughter were my priority. Um, we were already in the, um, we were, had already started doing the podcast when this had happened. So mm -hmm. um, it was an, it, I didn't want to stop doing this. This wasn't something that was uh, in my mind to say, like, I felt like this was a good platform for us to just be transparent because that's how we sure. started it, just right. to be honest. And so, but I did take a step back from full-time ministry. And I honestly, even I think on this podcast, I probably said it like, I, I'm not working back at no church. You got me messed up. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> like singing Waymaker on stage when your life is doesn't seem like he's making a way, right. it's not an easy thing to do. And I've sacrificed so much on the platform since I was born, mm -hmm. you know, being a pastor's kid. Like, I was like, I, I think that season's over. Yeah. Once I reached 40, I was like, I think I'm done. I did it, you know, like it's time to turn another chapter and do other things like my music and books and podcasts and things like that. Well, God has a sense of humor. He does. <laughs> and he, he, does. Really, he, he does. listens to us, but when he has a plan that Jeremiah 29 11, he laughs yeah. at our plan. Yeah. Doesn't he? He just smiles and I says, think that mm -hmm. is so rude. Me and him are talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I have accepted a job as executive pastor of a church in, in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, with a woman named Real Talk Kim. I love her so much and she's been a friend of mine for years and uh, super honored to be a part of that she's actually walked through some a lot of the same things I've walked through mm -hmm. uh, with with public divorce and she was one of those people that cling that she was clinging to me to be a friend mm -hmm. yeah. during that time and so it's so gracious of God to uh, send people your way that that have gone through like I said with the whole right. fear with with health situations, just sending people that have gone through it, honestly, with me. Yeah. <laughs> like she was going through her own situation yeah. with me, you know, and uh, we've held each other up. And it, it's it's my pleasure and honor to join as the executive pastor of our church to help her raise the church that she really didn't, she she wasn't expecting to do this either. Her, her dad yeah. died. Her father passed away and left her the church. And so wow, yeah. it's an honor to, to link arms with her and her and the staff there to, yeah. to and, you know, build the I've kingdom. been thinking about this this week and just praying for you. I've, I really feel like it's going to be the next chapter in your life. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to open some some doors. We all, we never, it's interesting how we always we want change, but we hate change when it comes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, of course we hate to leave you and hate to, make a change, but that in life you can't avoid change. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's all the, the things always are going to be changing. And mm -hmm. I know you've been waiting to see what God's going to do next and what's going to happen in your life next. Yeah. And I think that you're going to have some good things yeah. happening. I'm excited Atlanta. about it. I know God's got a plan. Yeah. Although I'm it's like walking on water. Yeah, sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Because it's it's like 
seriously, I understand yeah. what Peter was going yeah. through when he was yeah. walking on work. Because it's like, but it's sharks under there. It's people. <laughs> it's, it's touch folks. I don't want them. Big teeth. Big, big teeth. They bite. They bite hard, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to swim that well, you know. Yeah. And so, um, and then the... the the trauma of all of that, you know, it's just like, but I know God's got me. I've done, right. I've done the yeah. work, but I've, like, as far as counseling and talking through it, um, kept great people around yeah. me, but also have dug deep in the word, even when I didn't want to, when yeah. I was like, eh. you know, like I don't, it didn't work for my marriage. I was gonna, but like, I know that this next season, I know that God's with me. And mm-hmm. I know that, like you said, I know it is turning. I, I made a, a post on social media, like said, it's like it's like the the loud crackling turn of the page to the next right. chapter. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. almost, almost yeah. the next book. Right. It's yeah. like, it's not even just the next, it's like, here's a new book. Like yeah. it's something fresh and something new. So I'm so yeah. excited. And one day at a time. One day at a time. Just like you read a book one page at a time. You take this one day at a time, and you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Can and I, you've been. Oh no, go I, ahead. I was just going to tell her that I'm really proud of her. Yeah. Just you uh, to have watched you in the past few years walk through something really difficult, and we've watched you cling to the word, uh, even on the really hard days when you didn't want to. You clung to it and clinged. You clung. Cling. Uh, cling. 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 You held on really tight. In my life, I cling it. You clung. <laughs> you cling it from the King James version. Um, but I'm just really proud of you, Thank and you, I'm friend. so excited to see what God's going to do. I'm with Joyce. I just. God has something real special for you, yeah. and I can't wait to see what it is. I'm really proud I'm of you. Excited. Well, and it's it's been four years of sharing in this podcast journey. Yeah, I mean that is incredible to me, and and all of us in, in the audience um, yeah. just appreciate you and love you. And I know you've connected with so many people yeah. that um, appreciate all that you've shared, sharing your life for so long. So we're so grateful. Yeah to you. So thank you. No, and thank we you. we are going to take a, a bit of a hiatus for the summer because we don't have a plan right now to know exactly what this will all look like. So we're going to take a little break. We're going to trust God to show us what the next steps are and uh, take a few we're going to take a summer vacation. Months <laughs> off. Exactly. Oh, on holiday. <laughs> From the podcast, but then, then we'll probably be back in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, but Joyce, would you pray for, for sure. Jay as she takes these new Man, steps? And we just invite all the viewing audience to yeah. pray along with us. Yeah. Father, we pray for Jay. Here, let me have your hand. We pray for Jay, and Sorry. as uh, she's released with love and gratitude into the next chapter of her life, we pray that you will give her the grace, the inner strength that she needs to take each step and not be in a hurry and not let the waiting times frighten her, but to really enjoy each page of the new book of her life. I bless her in Jesus' name. I pray that you would continue to prosper her, anoint the words that come out of her mouth, give her really good new friends in this new area, and... Maybe even if that new love from that romance is in My Atlanta, <laughs> help her run into him at the right time and uh, just guide her every step of the way. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank All you. right. Amen. Thank you. Jay, we really believe that um, you've delighted in the Lord and that he's giving you the desires of your heart. Yeah. And I, I think there's... Wonderful things ahead, and we love you love very you much. Too. Thank you. Love all of you. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all for being with us. We hope that you discover incredible promises in God's Word as you continue to dig in and find out what it means to you and how much love and, and all those answers that God has for you. Thank you for being with us, and we will see you uh, in the fall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out is a wonderful place. Go there for today's resource to check out all of the episodes and to get to know us a little better. Please don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast and let us know what you're thinking. Your voice is important to us. 